Hi Gandhi class, welcome to your fourth and final maths lesson this week. It was so fantastic seeing you all on our live session this morning and it was really great to hear your feedback about the maths lesson that we had. Now I know a lot of you found a couple of things tricky in the independent task that you needed to do, so I'm going to go through those for you now before we move on to our next lesson. So the first thing people found tricky was the ABC system for question number one. This basically means you had three parts to each number sentence that you needed to complete. So part A, you needed to write, um, draw, sorry, the pictorial representation of three times eight. Now, or, or your number sentence that you had. Um, so what we're going to do here is because we've got three as our first number, that means we need three groups. So I would draw three circles. Then you have eight as the next number, so you need to draw eight dots in each circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Next, you needed to add them up to get the total. So we've got eight here, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So your answer would be 24. Now that's your pictorial part done. That's part A done. Next, you needed to move on to your knowledge of times tables. So as we said in previous lessons, your two times tables and your four times tables can work here. So I would choose the four times table. So I would do three times four, which we know equals 12. Now, because four is half of eight, all I need to do is double this number. So then I know that three times eight is 24. And that's how we use our knowledge of other times tables to help us. The next bit you needed to do was the distributive law. Now this is when we split them up. So I would do out of ease, I would do two times eight. And I know that is 16. Then I would do one times eight. And I know that is eight. And then I would add them together. Six add eight is, tw uh, sorry, six add eight is 14. So I'd put a four here, carry the 10. Then uh, one add one is two. So I would put two there, which equals 24. So that was what you needed to do for part one of your independent task yesterday. I'm gonna flick back to this screen here so that you can have a quick look at the questions that you needed to answer. So if you need to pause the video to re-answer these questions, then please do. Okay. The next thing people found tricky uh, was this grid. Now I know this grid is something quite new. We haven't properly looked at these before. Um, so what you needed to do was you needed to join the numbers up and wherever they landed, you then needed to do the number uh, sentence. So here you've got three times two. So then where it joins up, you would write six. Next, you've got three times four because you want to work out what this would be. So you need to join them up. So it'd be three times four. And we know that three times four is 12. Next, you needed to do three times eight, which we know is 24. Then you have some missing numbers here. So what you're going to have to do is the inverse. So we've got something times two equals 10. So you would do 10 divided by two to work out what goes here. And that would be five. You then can now work out what five times eight would be. So five times eight is 40. 
Next, you need to work out what would go here. And the only number you have is 72, which is here. So I would do 72 divided by eight, which equals, well done if you got nine. Then what you'll need to do is nine times two, and then you'd put that in that box here. So pause the video, what is nine times two? I want you to work that out. Two lots of nine. Well done if you got 18. And then you needed to do nine times four, which you put here. So pause the video to work out nine times four. And well done if you got 30. Six. So that's what your table should have looked like for the last activity. I hope that has helped you guys. Um, if you have any more questions, then we can speak about this next Thursday morning in our live session as well. Or um, you can speak in our Teams group chat um, and ask me any questions there too. <clears throat> Okay, so our learning objective for this lesson is can I use my knowledge of multiplication and division to compare statements using inequality symbols. So as a starter, I want you to look at this array carefully, you need to write two multiplication and two division number sentences to represent this array here. Now, what I would like for you to do is on your whiteboard that you got in your pack um, before Christmas, I want you to work that out. If it helps you to draw the array out, then please do. If not, just do the number sentences here and then I will go through the answers. So pause the video to write two multiplication and two division number sentences for this array here. Okay, so we can see that we've got one, two, three, four here going down, and then one, two, three, four, five, six going across. Then we can count all of them together to work it out, or you can use your times tables to work out the answer. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So four times six is 24. Now, another number sentence you could write would be six times four equals 24. Multiplication and addition number sentences are able to swap round the order here. Do you remember what that is called? Pause the video to have a think. Well done if you got that it is commutative. So multiplication and addition number sentences are commutative because these two numbers can be swapped around and the answer will still be the same. Now we need to write our division number sentences. Now when we divide, we need to start with the biggest number. So we would do 24 divided by six would equal four and 24 divided by four would equal six. Well done if you got those correct. Okay, now what I want you to do is I want you to write a multiplication number sentence to represent each array. You need to use either um, more than, less than or equal to to compare the arrays and the number sentences you have written. Now remember, the crocodile likes to eat the biggest number just to help remind you that they need to be eating the biggest number. So what we need to do is work out the array here. We've got one, two, three, four, five going down and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven going across. We need to work out what five times seven is. So pause the video. What is five times seven? Well done if you got 30. 
5. Now we need to work out what the array is for this one. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 going down and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 going across. What is 4 times 9? Pause the video to have a think. Well done if you got 36. Now we need to use more than, less than or equal to uh, with a symbol to say which one is more than or less than. So here we've got 35, here we've got 36. Which way is the crocodile going to be facing? Remember, he likes to eat the biggest number. So pause the video. I want you to write this number sentence out and put the correct symbol in between your number sentences. Pause the video here and then we'll go through the answer. Well done if you got that the crocodile should be facing towards four times nine. Five times seven equals 35 is less than four times nine equals 36. Okay, so now we need to look at it as though we are writing a division number sentence to represent the arrays. Can you try and complete these number sentences below? Remember the biggest number needs to go at the start and then uh, put the correct, number, uh, correct symbol in and we'll go through the answer in just a second. So pause the video here. I want you to write the division number sentence with the answer and put the correct um, symbol in between the two number sentences. Okay, so here we could have put 35 divided by 5 equals 7. And then here we could have put 36 divided by 4 equals 9. Which way would our crocodile be facing? It would be eating the nine because 35 divided by five equals seven is less than 36 divided by four equals nine. I wonder if there was anything else you could have put. If you've got something different, please make sure you write it down on a piece of paper and upload it to Tapestry so I can check it later. Okay, so Rebecca uses counters to make arrays. Use the arrays she has made to compare six times eight and four times 12 which symbol completes the statement. So here we have six times eight, and here we have four times 12. So the first thing we need to do is work out what six times eight is. So pause the video, what is six times eight? Well done if you got that it is 48. You could use any method to work it out. You could have counted the arrays or you could have used the methods that we um, looked at yesterday. Now we need to work out four times 12. So I want you to pause the video here and work out what four times 12 is. Well done if you got 48. Now let's have a look at our answers. We've got 48 and 48. So what do we put in the middle? What symbol should we use? Pause the video to have a think. Well done if you got the equal sign. It means that whatever is on this side of the equal sign is the same as what's on this side of the equal sign. So well done if you got that correct. Now your independent task, 
on a piece of paper with a pencil, I want you to work through these questions here. So question number one, you need to use your knowledge of the times tables or concrete and pictorial representations to compare these number sentences. So you can either draw it out or if you can work it out, that's perfect. What you need to do is you need to write one times two equals, you need to work it out, then one times four equals, you need to work it out. And in the middle, you need to put the correct symbol. So is it more than, less than, or equal to? And you need to do that for each of these. You've got one here, another one here, and your third one there. Now what you need to do is use your knowledge of the times tables or concrete or pictorial representations to compare these statements. So you've got A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Oh, sorry, A, B, C, D, E, and F. And what you need to do is work out what three times eight is, work out what six times four is, and use the right symbol in between the two sentence, number sentences. Is it more than, less than, or equal to? And you need to work through all of these. And if you really want to push yourself even further, then you have got an extension here. Please make sure you upload all of your work to Tapestry. Um, I can't wait to see how hard you've worked today. And I hope you have a lovely weekend and I will see you on Monday. Bye Gandhi class.